Just to recap, in part one, we made a, a lower third super that affected on like this, and it actually animated uh, the auto follow. In the second tutorial, we did something very similar, except on this one, on the update move, we had put in here at state. So the bar, instead of coming all the way back, it actually grew or shrunk to the size of the text. So in this tutorial, I'm going to do something just a little bit different. All right, this one actually has an animation that comes on, and you can see it all comes in pieces. So it fades up and it moves into place, but it still has the capability that I can type and it pushes elements out. So this little bar here and this logo here are set to auto follow and it will still animate in pieces accordingly to how big the, the, the bar is. So let's start with uh, scene 21. First of all, I'm going to explain just a little bit what I've done here with these logos. Okay, so on the logo chip, I actually created a pod that had a rounded edge. And again, we do that in the 3D primitive and just uh, on the lower left-hand corner added some roundness to it and the upper left-hand corner did the same thing. Then I went and put the logo on top of it and I wanted to mask that logo exactly the same shape as this, as this, but have it cut out a little bit. So I took this logo chip, copied it, and pasted it so it was exactly the same size, and that's what this mask did. So this logo chip is exactly the same, and if you look at uh, the surface properties of this logo mask, um, I took the image away, that little highlight, and the other thing is I brought the alpha down to 100. If it's up at 100, it doesn't, the mask doesn't properly, so you bring it down to uh, zero. Let's go to Tools Masking. And on this one, I used the shader masking because I wanted to have roundness if the logo went round over here. So if you look at level five, I added the uh, left logo mask, which is that, and the target was the team logo, this one. And you'll notice up here that these three things, this one here is invert the mask, this one is a luma mask, and this is show the mask. So I actually went down and I set this one to be luma uh, or invert mask. So I want I want the I want the where the where the actual uh, chip is. I want that to show up now. So that's inverted the mask. If you look at this GM logo, it's basically the same thing only in the reverse. Okay, this text bar here is exactly the same one that we used previously. And I just had two little pods here that make little highlight lines. So again, the goal is to animate each one of these things uh, individually, but I want them to animate um, individually. Okay, so because I'm using auto follow here, that's not um, it's not normally able to be done. But we, with again, with some of the changes in the auto follow, we're able to do that now. So if you look at this, the sponsor group. First of all, I, w I went to the text group, and this bar white again, it's uh, linked to the te text group, which is this one, exactly the same as we did in the previous uh, tutorials. The sponsor group, it's linked to the text group as well, and this right highlight is linked to the text group as well. Now, if I want, to, uh, so really this element here this line here and this text here, uh, I can animate those right now. There's no problem. But these two things are linking to the to the text. So really, whatever animation I do to this, these two things are going to follow. But I want to separate those. Now, the first thing I want to do is if you have to separate them, you have to put them into a group. So again, this one is by itself. So I'll add it to a group. We'll call it uh, group highlight. Now the sponsor group is already in a group, but you can see that the group is actually linked to the text group, so I want to put that into a group as well. So we'll just leave it group sponsor group. Okay, so that's basically done. The next thing you can see, if I take this right now and I try to animate this, can't animate it. It stays because it's linked to this text. 
All right, so this is how we get around it. If we go down here and we lock, turn this lock hierarchy off and flag these as first frame only, this will now work. And what does first frame only do? Well, first frame only, first of all, it does um, the auto follow, but it actually sets up the auto follow to work on the first frame only in the default timeline tab. All right, so if I say that, yes, I want this to auto follow, um, it will auto follow, but only on the first keyframe. Okay, so then I come down to this one, the highlight, and I do the same thing. Turn this off, set it to first frame only. Then I put them into the group because I want the groups, I want these things to always line up accordingly, but then we're going to animate the groups. Okay, so now that they're set, we can take these five layers and I want to add them to my effect in. Okay, we're going to go down to the 20 frame mark and we're going to add a keyframe to each one of these. So I'll just simply add a keyframe, add a keyframe. And the other thing that I like to do right away is go in to modify it. Say I want to do an ease in of 20 frames. So they're all set to uh, have a keyframe at 20 frames and they're all set to ease in. So let's start with the logo chip. So let's uh, let's do a little animation on this. Maybe bring it down to 100, bring the transparency down, and then maybe as I come up to, I don't know, five frames in, we'll bring the transparency up all the way, just so you can see it quicker. So it's done. Now, uh, the left line. Okay, so what do you want the left line to do? Well, you know, I can animate it Let's bring it away over here. And we'll bring the transparency down to zero. And again, just come over to five keyframes and bring it up. So again, it's gonna slide over like this. And we'll do the same thing here with the text and bar. Bring it down to zero. Bring it up, and I'm just going to do the same thing to all, all of them. All right, come back to five frames. Bring the surface up. And the surface is up. Now they're all sort of coming in at the same time, so let's start offsetting them. So this left highlight, let's offset it by, I don't know, three frames. And then uh, the text bar will go to uh, six frames with it. And uh, the highlight will go to uh, nine frames with it. And then uh, the bottom, the top one will go to uh, 12 frames. Okay, so they still look like they're kind of wrong. If you highlight all of them again and go to the transition properties and say hold first frame and they'll come back and you'll see that they'll all start coming in at different times. So let's record that to uh, scene 22. And uh, we'll close this and I'm going to open up my virtual frame buffer here. 22 and play it to the output. Okay, that looks good. Now I can go in and type in my name here. You can see that it's smaller, but the animation still works. It doesn't matter. So a great, um, a, you know, a great addition to uh, the auto follow. Um, and again, all we did, go to auto follow, turn the lock hierarchy off and the first frame off. 
turn it off. Just on those two. So this is a great addition to the auto follow that allows you to uh, manipulate the bar depending on how long it is and then be able to create uh, custom animations to bring that on.